Hello there, this is Shao, and welcome to today's episode of PoxFX. Repeat PoxFX. This tutorial is all about ways to use distortion in your mix without making it sound terrible. For those who are new, remember that if you're lost, check the tutorial archive in the description. So let's get started. Distortion. At its most basic level, distortion is any kind of alteration to a waveform's original shape. There are many ways this can happen, but they all do the same thing. They change the pattern of frequencies. I'll be focusing on harmonic distortion for this video, as most producers are familiar with it. Or at least they know what it sounds like. Normally, the relationship between input amplitude and output amplitude is linear, or directly proportional. An increase in input results in a similar increase in output. This linear relationship is maintained even if the output signal is louder than the input. But some things change this relationship so that it's no longer linear. When this happens, you get distortion. Let me show you. So here we have a sine wave. Right now, the input of this sine wave is linear with its output. When I turn up the volume, the whole signal increases by the same amount. But when I use this plugin, the relationship becomes nonlinear, which changes the wave. So why is it doing that? Well, the pattern of frequencies determines the shape of the wave. When I play those notes at the same time, it creates that wave shape. But this also works in reverse. You can change the shape of a wave and produce a new pattern of frequencies. And now the sine wave is a square wave. This plugin changes the amplitude of the audio so that the output isn't one to one with the input. It can make the louder parts quiet and the quiet parts loud. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, but isn't that what a compressor does? Yes, it is. Distortion is a type of compression, but a compressor's attack and release controls determine how fast it applies the compression. With this plugin, the compression is so fast that it pushes and pulls the individual oscillations of the waveform. This changes the frequencies and even adds new ones. Before, after, etc. This particular distortion plugin is called a wave shaper. It has an input output graph, this right here. By default, the input and output are set to one to one. And as long as you keep the line straight, the compression it applies won't change the wave. But when you change the line so that the input output relationship is nonlinear, you get distortion. See, it's not a perfect sine wave anymore. The fun thing about a wave shaper is that you can make any line pattern you want. Just keep it on first. It also has this preamp knob that makes the signal louder, pushing it farther into the graph. Sounds vaguely talky, doesn't it? While wave shapers are quite flexible, it can be hard to know what line shape will produce which sound. This is why many people prefer dedicated distortion plugins, which tend to be much simpler. Like this one. This is a software version of a guitar distortion pedal. As you can see, it has much fewer options and only produces one kind of distortion. But if this is the distortion you want, you just need to grab the plugin, turn it on, tweak a few knobs, and then you're done. Here's another example. This is a guitar amp simulator. It has more options, but it's also pretty limited.
etc. So that's the trade-off. Wave Shapers lets you make pretty much any distortion pattern, but you have to figure out how to do it. Simple distortion plugins give you limited distortion options, but they're very easy to use. I use both methods, depending on the sound I'm going for. Now let's talk about vocals. I long for your face. Unlike a sine wave, vocals are recorded instruments, and recorded instruments need special care when using distortion or else they sound bad. I long for I'm sure some of you just went, what are you talking about? That sounded awesome. Well, it kind of does. Distorted vocals can be a nice touch to your music. And heavy distortion is what you use to create a walkie-talkie vocal effect. But, as you may have noticed, the more you distort the vocal, the harder it is to understand. So here are some ways to address that. First, use less distortion. I long for... Second, adjust the wet level of the distortion. Many distortion plugins, like the Wave Shaper here, have a mix knob for this. I long for your face. In the case of FL, so does the effects slot. I long for. You can also put your distortion on a send, like I did with reverb in the last tutorial. Another way to distort vocals is with vintage modeled plugins. These plugins are designed to behave like old school analog hardware. Many producers like analog effects because of the way they color the audio. Vintage model plugins attempt to imitate this behavior. Some common ones include compressors, EQs, and delays. This one is a compressor. One of the main ways they sound vintage is using saturation, which is a type of gentle distortion. Let me show you what it looks like using the wave shaper. Let me reset this real quick. I long for... That's saturation. Vintage modeled plugins do the same thing. It's subtle, but it adds some extra character to the vocal. I long for your face. I need you always. You also have to be careful, as you noticed, I turned down the output gain on the, on the saturation plugin because most distortion plugins make your audio louder. Be careful about that. Also, quick note, this, this, and this are all available for free download. I've put links to all of these and more free uh, vintage modeled and distortion plugins in the description. But what about letting your vocal clip? I've said before that it's bad. Now I'll explain why. When you clip your vocals, you're pretty much doing this. I long for your face. As you can see, the peaks of the audio are cut off, which changes the sound of the vocal. This happens when your mic volume is louder than your system can handle. This is bad for two reasons. First, clipped vocals are usually unintentional. You might have your mic volume up too loud, or you might be yelling into your mic without proper gain staging. These things often happen when you don't want them to, like podcasting or voiceover. This kind of distortion makes your vocal sound trashy and amateur. Second, the clipping caused by loud vocals is not controlled distortion. Distortion plugins, like the ones I showed you, are designed to distort audio in precise ways. Clipping is unpredictable and random because it's caused by a problem in the recording process. It's like the difference between cutting a piece of wood with a saw and attempting to break it with your hands. The result will be a lot more random and unpredictable. Further, every sound system will interpret the clipped signal in a different way. So if you want distortion, use the right tools for the job. Use distortion plugins.
Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover here. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions about distortion, saturation, or vintage model plugins, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And as always, if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. Next time, I'll explain how to create our first voice-like sounds, noise risers, and wobble bass. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Did it keep anything of what I just recorded? <sighs> it doesn't look like it. Oh, whoa, whoa, it did. <laughs>